Next-gen RX 10,000 GPUs could destroy NVIDIA with this. But before I get to that, Nintendo's Switch 2 pricing, release date, and specs are official, and we now know what's going on with these Ryzen CPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Nintendo has officially announced the long-rumored Switch 2. And of course, while I typically only discuss PC hardware, this is definitely a huge launch that I thought I'd go over. Specifically, they've given us information on specs, pricing, release date, quite a few things, but yeah, let's just get right to it. Starting things off, Nintendo has confirmed that the processor is a custom one from NVIDIA. And that's certainly not much of a surprise given recent rumors have claimed that it was going to be by NVIDIA. Now there were some earlier ones claiming that AMD was at least in talks with Nintendo, but obviously they didn't win out on this one. Moving on to the display, you can see that it's significantly larger compared to 6.2 inches. We're now looking at a whopping 7.9 inches. Not only that, but it's also a 1080p screen with 120 hertz with an HDR mode. So this is obviously a huge upgrade over the current generation Switch. But just like with the first gen Switch, there is a dock and that is also improved because as you can see, it has display output up to 4K 60 FPS in TV mode. Moving on to storage, we have 256 gigabytes that is included with the Switch 2, but then it also offers microSD expansion up to two terabytes. Not only that, but they are apparently still using game cards as well for those who did like having physical media. You can see that the Switch 2 version looks almost identical. The only difference is that it's red instead of black. Then for connectivity, so this is like output and things like that, we're first looking at Wi-Fi 6, dual USB Type-C connector, then it does come with a game card slot, and then like I said, a micro SD Express slot. Oh, and speaking of specifically Express, this is micro SD Express, which is a bit faster than a regular micro SD card, so yeah, it uses the new micro SD Express. Then when it comes to the battery, it comes with a 5,220 milliamp hour battery. Then I also wanted to go over one thing that's sort of interesting is that there is apparently a new C button and this does seem to have to do with chats. And what's wild is that it also comes with a new camera. You can see right here, it's launching alongside the console, which enables real-time video chat within game chat. I don't really know how I feel about that one. It's definitely gonna have some really odd stuff if people can actually see you while you're gaming. But of course, that is something new there. But finally, we have both the release date and price with the release date on June 5th, 2025, though, Pre-orders are set to start April 9th in the U.S. And then the price, this is of course a pretty big one, up to $449, making this the most expensive Nintendo console ever. Of course, it feels like I'm always talking about the next best thing. Tech is evolving faster than ever. AI, quantum computing, automation, if you want to keep up, you have to keep learning. And that's where today's sponsor comes in. Brilliant, the online platform that I use when I want to learn something new. They don't just tell you how things work, they help you figure it out yourself through interactive lessons. No lectures, no memorization, just hands-on problem solving. Like their course on large language models, which is what's used to train most of today's most advanced AI models. And there's tons more courses just like it. What's even better is that each one is broken up into smaller sections that only take a few minutes to complete. So you can learn anywhere and anytime. And to make things even better, Brilliant is offering my viewers a free trial when you visit Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt. Plus, when you use Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt, you'll get 20% off their annual premium. So there's no reason not to check it out. Once again, that's Brilliant.org slash GamerMelt. And next up for today, quite a few users have been having some major issues with AMD's newest Ryzen 9000 X3D chips. And I'm talking issues like bulging CPUs. So this is some pretty bad stuff. In fact, according to Tom's Hardware, there's over 100 documented cases so far. 
Though not all of those are damage to the hardware themselves, some can just be boot issues and things like that, so it is tough to know exactly what is related to this and what isn't. Plus, a hundred or so out of the hundreds of thousands sold isn't a huge issue, but still, there's clearly something going on. Especially with a couple new cases that impact the newest Ryzen 9950X 3D. Now, most of these also seem to be affected by ASRock boards, so like I said, something really seems like it's going on. Well, it looks like we finally have our answer, as AMD and ASRock have revealed the root cause of the issue. And luckily, there is a fix. Well, a fix to make sure this doesn't happen again. If your CPU is bulging or anything like that, definitely contact whoever you bought it from and do an RMA. But either way, as you can see right down here, it says, quote, we are aware of a limited number of user reports involving ASRock AM5 motherboards failing to complete post. Following a joint investigation, AMD and ASRock identified a memory capability issue present in earlier BIOS versions, which has been rectified in the latest BIOS. And this is, of course, AMD speaking with Tom's Hardware. Basically, if you do have an ASRock AM5 board, I would definitely suggest making sure your BIOS is updated. Most of the time, it's suggested not to update your BIOS if everything is working properly, but this is definitely a time you likely should. And lastly for today, many of you already know that AMD's next-gen GPUs, let's call them RX 10,000 for now, are going to be built on their architecture called UDNA. This comes from AMD themselves, so it is official. And for those who may not remember what that means, AMD is essentially going back to a combined GPU architecture for both their compute GPUs and gaming GPUs. They originally did this with their GCN architecture and then changed it to RDNA and CDNA. Well, now they're going back, and we just got a huge hint as to why. In a new video from Red Gaming Tech, he claims that one of the big changes that will come with UDNA is that AMD is bringing over their matrix cores from CDNA. And this is something that could be absolutely massive for next-gen GPUs, plus it makes a lot of sense. See, while AMD has made huge improvements for their ray tracing with RDNA 4, the company still has a bit to go. For example, while they do have dedicated hardware for ray tracing within their CUs, as well as some dedicated AI hardware, they're still missing a couple things. With the biggest one being that they still don't have dedicated hardware for BVH traversal, instead relying on their shader units for it. This is a huge reason why performance still tends to break down compared to Nvidia GPUs when you get to really intense ray tracing workloads or path tracing. Don't get me wrong, AMD has massively improved their RT cores with RDNA 4, and they did it while saving a bunch of silicon space. So it's still really impressive, and it does make sense. But if AMD can pull the matrix cores from their CDNA architecture, they could easily compete with NVIDIA and potentially even beat them completely in ray tracing for next gen. Of course, I know it's always next gen for AMD, but this is definitely a real path for it. So while that does it for today, do you think AMD will finally catch up and potentially even beat NVIDIA with UDNA? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermel. And as always, have a great day.